A lot of people, sh uh, a lot of people are saying that we should have modern katas. We should have uh, modern techniques uh, as part of a modern gokyo. I really believe that this is a good idea. I think that, that we should have modern katas, and I think that we should have modern gokyo. But we should never forget the basic fundamentals because we always have to go back to the base, the foundation. And that, I think, was one of the key elements of what Jigoro Kano was after. He never wanted us to forget the, the basic and the fundamentals and what make up the techniques. Because the basics and the fundamentals, the gokyo, is used in all of the modern uh, techniques that are used today by the great champions. It, it incorporates all of it. Sometimes only in part, and sometimes as a whole. But the important thing to remember is that we still have to go back to that basic fundamental. We mustn't forget that. The gokyo is the gokyo, and we must keep it. So therefore, we start with the gokyo, and then we move on from the gokyo. That's when we start to put in the modern interpretations. And the modern interpretations are something that will always evolve. Evolution in Judo um, is something that is inevitable. Techniques move on. But we must never forget the basic fundamentals of the Gokyo. Hi, this is Shadi. And the question is, should Judo evolve? And the answer is absolutely yes. We cannot stop evolution. We cannot even delay it. With the level of competition, a lot of things are just organically evolving. So how do, how do we do this and actually structure it in a way that can help modern and future uh, competitors or the future generations? A lot of techniques are just evolving because of competition. I'll give you an example. Ushimata is a great example. There's a huge debate about uh, is it a Koshiwaza or is it an Ashiwaza? In the past, it was clearly uh, Ashiwaza, the way it is put in Nage no Kata, the way you get them around you and then lift up their uh, thigh with your own thigh and not actually having your hips. But in today's world, to avoid Sukashi, to avoid a Geishi, you actually get underneath them, lift with the side of your thigh and then just hurl them over like Inoue, Mariyama and Ono. Um, and also the Japanese are training Hanegoshi as a base for uh, Uchimata. So they're clearly using their hips and at the same time having a contact with the inner thigh. For them now, um, Hanegoshi and Uchimata are one technique. Hanegoshi happens to be a variation. At least that's how they're uh, telling me now that I'm interacting with them far more and I'm understanding Judo a lot more. Even now, if I want to do uh, Mariyama's Uchimata, uh, even if I aim at the far side of the hip, it might look like an Ashiwaza when in fact I'm having clear contact with the hips now that I understand more. But the thing is, it's that it has blurred edges between Ashiwaza and Koshiwaza. Uh, I'm still reaping the inner thigh, but at the same time I'm getting underneath them and using far more hip. Another one is Kataguruma, leg grabs or no leg grabs. Um, I'm tying them to my shoulders and sacrificing myself sideways. So it's still shoulder wheel in the sense, but uh, if you want to group it, it is now more Yoko Sutemiwaza. Um, back in the day, you would either lift them up on your shoulders and using your hands to finish the technique, hence Teiwaza. Uh, but you can also do it as a Yoko Sutemi. Now, I'll cover Uchimata and uh, Kataguruma and Kosotogake and more in depth on my main channel but today I want to talk about kata. You see here the nage ura no kata being performed by uh, Kyuzo Mifune. It is absolutely crucial that we have today this uh, kata as an official kata because countering such an important part of our competitive days uh, and our competitive era we have to understand how Tori is actually uh, taking us in a particular direction, how to take it and then use it to our own advantage to throw, uh, not just relying on instructionals because too many instructionals out there are, are making us, I would say, more confused than more structured because this is one good thing about kata is that it structures everything. Just like Nage no Kata, it is structured Teiwaza, Koshiwaza, 
uh, Ashiwaza and Sutemi, etc. And Katame no Kata is the same with Asai Komi, Kansetsu, and Shimewaza. The same with uh, countering attacks, uh, Gono Sen or Nageura no Kata. It helps to paint a clear image on how to approach things and how to understand them. He's attacking with Tewaza, then I need to do this. If he's attacking with Koshiwaza, then I need to have this particular part of my body essential in order to counter, etc. Another kata that I would think about is a transition kata. Because judokas, we are very good in transitioning. For example, you can have a series where uh, Uke is attacking, dropping down for Serenage or Asutemiwaza and how I counter it and transitioning into Neiwaza, how to hunt for an Osaikomi or a Kansetsu or a Shimewaza. Another one where I'm attacking with Sutemi and then if it failed, how I attack with either uh, turn them over, uh, Kansetsu Waza like a Tomoe Nage into Armbar because we judokas are specialized in uh, transitions and the reason is because we know very well the stand up but we have also a very firm understanding of Neiwaza. We might not be the best at it in terms of um, staying there for minutes and minutes on end compared to BJJ or any other uh, discipline like submission grappling. But we do have firm understanding of Neiwaza and that's why we can tie up the two very well. Um, Rokas is a very large man, 6'3", 6'4". Uh, he was dominating the Neiwaza but when we stood up and I went for Sutemi, he never saw that armbar coming. Why? Because I have a firm understanding of Neiwaza, but I'm also very confident in the stand-up. So that's why I got that Juji Gitame, and that's why we are specialists in transitions. And Neil Adams is someone that really likes transitions, and transitions, in my opinion, should be a kata of its own. And one last kata, in my opinion, should be a Neiwaza kata, not katame no kata, but also understanding how to apply these submissions from various positions either uh, i'm attacking from open guard or closed guard and you structure it as well you attack uh, by turning over into a psychomi you attack by uh, directly applying kansetsuwaza and shimewaza and also uh, maybe you turn over you got your leg tangled and then you attack with either shimewaza or kansetsuwaza so uh, these were all will all be applied in competition today, but there's so many instructionals, there's so many people telling you left and right what to do. We need to have a structured idea of these particular aspects that are very important in judo, like countering, transitioning, and being in Neiwaza in general, how to attack quickly, because our time is very limited compared to other disciplines. Uh, one other thing is the turtle, um, like I mentioned. Uh, whether it's uh, uke attacking, dropping down, uh, they're either really exposed like in Saranage or they just turtle completely. How I attack that turtle, that there's also should be a very good structure and firm understanding of how to do so because there's just so many options and people will get easily lost. And how many matches you watch where the mate is just called and they can't attack the turtle or they can't attack a belly down opponent so i think we should just transcend from kime no kata uh, katame no kata nage no kata because we, we only do them f to pass grades like ju no kata when i'm really high up there i want to get to seventh dan uh, nage no kata i want to get my black belt but we should have uh, kata that actually really translates to modern competitive judo but at the same time will help you become a good judoka in general uh, maybe you want to be a professor you should understand transitions you want to be a good teacher you should understand the turtle how to attack it how to attack from newaza sweeping etc uh, not just for the olympian or the, the the guy that wants to win the grand prix or the grand slam but it's for all of us uh, self-defense in general attacking from off your back in a structured way to understand fully is also very good in general not just for randori but in your understanding of judo uh, overall so uh, if you have anything else to add please let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening